Today's video is sponsored by Ridge Wallets. I'll tell you more about them later on in the show. And show you just how much touring mode still doesn't give a f It's really not doing any work protecting me from the wind. Uh, it really wants you to be here, right? It wants you to be in the pocket all the time. I mean, again, we're in touring mode, guys. We're in touring mode. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Yammy Noob, and today it is a living with the Aprilia Tuono V4 factory right here. I'm going to be spending a little while riding this motorcycle around, getting to use it as a daily rider, and seeing how it does on the street. So, without further ado, let's dive right in. Now, for those of you who don't know how this works, it has been a minute since I've released a living with, but these videos are basically me taking one of these motorcycles and I ride it around as if it were my motorcycle for a handful of days and really familiarize myself with how this bike handles on the street because that's how I normally ride motorcycles. Now, unfortunately, with all the production stuff and travel going on, I haven't been able to spend as much time with this motorcycle as I normally would. Normally I film these over several days, but I have been able to spend a lot of time with this bike off camera and I've gotten very familiar with it. So let's dive right in with this motorcycle as a commuting bike. Alrighty folks, welcome to what might as well be your commute if you pick up a Tuono as your uh, daily rider. And what can I say about the Tuono on the highway? Other than the fact that, yeah, no duh, it can do the highway just fine. The power on this bike is so nice, right? We've talked about before how this motorcycle makes such broad and aggressive torque. Like, uh, we're at, what, 6,000 RPM, I think? I mean, there is no situation on this motorcycle where you're really in the wrong gear like here let's that's sixth gear i still have a ton of roll on power you can literally be anywhere on this motorcycle and you've got power to do whatever you want to do whether or not you're passing whether or not you're doing massive stupid highway pulls on this motorcycle it's got you covered. And, you know, I, me personally, having ridden around on this motorcycle a lot, I've spent a good amount of seat time in this bike at this point. Um, man, as much fun as this power is, there is nowhere where you get to play with it. It is better on this motorcycle than a lot of other ones, though. Uh, yeah, obviously you can't get to the screaming top end of this V4. But the way Aprilia has geared it, you know, you get to play with a lot of power no matter where you are. Um, even if we bump it down to touring mode. So let's go over there to tour. It's definitely a lot more chilled out, right? The throttle response isn't so aggressive. Um, it's pretty mellow, all things considered. But that's a relative pretty mellow because this motorcycle in sport or track mode is just so hair on fire that, you know, it feels manageable, right? It does a decent job of calming this motorcycle down. But that's just a little squirt in sixth gear. Let me, let me drop down a couple of gears and show you just how much touring mode still doesn't give a f Let's let this guy go. And then, yoink. I mean, it's still lifting the front end in third gear. I mean, I could go full throttle there, which is cool. I don't normally go full throttle on this motorcycle in sport mode. But I mean, it still has so much power, guys. And I think that's the thing that a lot of people don't consider when they think about picking up one of these motorcycles is they're just unstoppable forces of nature. And man, 
for my daily commute if because you know let, let's let's be real my commute to the office here is about 10 minutes and for 10 minutes sure i'd love to have some fun but let's say for example that this is my daily commute where i need to get on a highway and just cruise for like i don't know uh, it's been you know about six or seven miles since i left the office um and i mean yeah it's fun but what's the point you know i still i can't touch the power on this motorcycle and then we come to the commuting ergonomics of this bike which by all standards, for super bike standards, super crazy comfortable, right? The handlebars are above your knees. But when you're looking at the modern crop of hyper nakeds, it's, it's pretty lean forward, you know? The Super Duke, very upright. It's like a, you know, 200 horsepower Supermoto. The MT-10, also very upright. Uh, Jixer Thal, or Jixis Thal, super upright. I think this is probably one of the more aggressive setups on a Hyper Naked. Um, even the Ducati, the Street Fighter V4, it didn't feel this aggressive. It felt like it was a little bit more upright. But again, you can just you can feel the the racing heritage and how much this bike just wants to go all the time. And man, on the daily commute, spending that much time on a motorcycle that just wants to rip your arms off, it does get old, guys. And I, I know, I know you're sitting in the comment section right now being like, no way, it'll never get old. It's, it's just a bunch of fun. I, I would ride it every single day of the week uh, if I want it. And sure, absolutely, I'm sure you would. But... There is something to be said for having a super crazy hair on fire motorcycle and then something that's a little bit more chill, you know, something that you could really comfortably commute on because while this is more comfortable than an RSV4, it is more comfortable than a uh, R1, it is more comfortable than basically any super sport out there. The seat is still pretty stiff and the bars are still pretty low and the pegs are still pretty high. I mean, this motorcycle, it's, it's a thoroughbred fast boy motorcycle and you really can feel it by the way that this windscreen is set up, windscreen. Um, it's really not doing any work protecting me from the wind. Uh, it really wants you to be here, right? It wants you to be in the pocket all the time. Because that's what this bike is meant to do, you know? It's just meant to be going 120 miles an hour all the time, at least. If you're not, if you're not doing triple digits on this motorcycle, you're kind of riding it wrong. And as a commuter, that's not really what I'm looking for. So, as far as the bike's commutability, yes, 100%, totally doable. But I would find myself reaching for the keys for this on a Saturday and not on a Monday morning. You know, there are better ways to wake yourself up. Coffee is a thing. You don't need 200 horsepower to do it. Although, again, let's, let's be completely real here. It is a lot of fun on this bike to go fast. It is a lot of fun. And it is so capable. It is so capable of going so fast. <laughs> Alrighty, now with all of that being said, let's kick this back into the shop so I can talk a little bit about some of the things that I love on this motorcycle and some of the things that really kind of annoy me because it didn't get to leave the factory in Italy without picking up a lot of Italian eccentricities 
and that means it does stuff just a little bit weird. Now while we're on the topic of living with something on the daily, there's an easy way to improve your life and you're just not doing it. You see, Ridge Wallets makes the best in currency containment systems on the market. Their wallets hold all your cards and cash in one small sleek package with RFID block and tech so no one can steal your personal details, but you already know that already. What you might not know is that Ridge makes so much more for your EDC loadout. They've got a bunch of different bags from duffels to backpacks in all shapes and sizes, knives because everybody needs a good knife on their hip, pens, key cases, and more. Click that link down below and use the code YAMMYNOOB for 10% off your order. Now diving right in, my favorite thing on this motorcycle has to be the engine. Oh my god, this engine is so good. It makes so much power, the torque is so broad, so linear, and the engine note is to die for. I, I mean, literally, if you wanted to play pretend MotoGP on the street, this is the only motorcycle you should buy. Yeah, the MT-10, the R1, they sound cool with that cross-plane crank. Nothing sounds as good in person as this Tuono does, as the RSV4 does. Whatever Aprilia has managed to stuff in this engine, it is, it is the best sounding motorcycle engine ever. Just bar none. However, that also means that because it's making a ton of power, making really cool noises, going super fast, it has a bunch of technology on here, leading me to something I don't like, and that is the way that the technology works on this motorcycle. Don't get me wrong, it works fine. I've actually used the traction control, not least of which today when I was going around a corner and got a little bit zesty with it, and the traction control saved me from doing something stupid. But, I mean, the menus, they're so bad. Why is it so complicated to set stuff up on this motorcycle? Uh, yeah, you do have the mode select button right here on the handlebar, but it just doesn't get the job done super quick. You have to go in there and tap through. You have sport, user, and touring, but finding track and race mode, it's all in here, but you have to do so much menu diving. I actually really prefer Ducati's menus when it comes to this because you can very quickly go in and tweak stuff. And on the Aprilia, it just kind of sucks. Now, something that is a bit of a bummer for me, but probably won't annoy you so much, is the peg height. Because this motorcycle is functionally an RSV4 with a handlebar, it has very aggressive peg height. Now, as a street rider and a taller street rider at that, it does get a little bit annoying having my knee at such an aggressive bend every time I'm on the bike. That also leads to the handlebars being just a little bit low for a hyper naked. I mean, obviously, RSV4 with a handlebar, it's going to be pretty aggressive, but as far as hyper nakeds go, this one is like next level. The next thing I love about this motorcycle is the looks. I mean, guys, come on, <laughs> look at this motorcycle. Aprilia has managed to put together a bike that looks just gorgeous. It is achingly Italian from every angle. It is muscle from any angle. It's so aggressive looking. And I mean, the look back factor is next level on this bike. It is so cool. Now, one thing that is both a good thing and a bad thing is the throttle on this motorcycle. I like the way that the throttle feels when you're rolling. When you feed it in and you're going, say, above like 5,000 RPM, the throttle feels really nice. However, below that, and in touring mode especially, the roll on and off throttle can be a little bit herky-jerky. It's better in the race mode, which is why this motorcycle has spent the bulk of its time in the shop in race mode, just because the throttle feel is more one-to-one, -one, but it's definitely something you're gonna want to address on this motorcycle. It can be a little bit lurchy, and on a motorcycle where you have so much torque, a lurchy throttle can be a bit annoying. Now, this is gonna be one of those things where I'm gonna leave it up to you guys, but personally, me, I don't need all of the Farkles on this motorcycle. They are very cool to have the fully adjustable electronic suspension and all that good stuff on here, but I might as well be willing to save a couple of grand, get fully adjustable suspension, and get the base model Tuono. I mean, it's still making the same power, you just don't have the crazy levels of adjustability and the suspension working for you. You have to manually set it. 
but for most street riders, it's a one and done kind of thing. You don't really need to be adjusting your suspension too, too much. So personally, I'd probably go with the base model Tuono, but I mean, it is such a flex to have the electronically adjustable suspension. Now, with all of that being said, let's get the motorcycle back on the road and see how it handles a twisty road. Alrighty guys, I have now pulled over here on Cow Creek. Uh, I actually needed to take a break, believe it or not. Um, it's not that the bike's uncomfortable. Uh, it's not the most comfortable place to sit. But the thing about this that it, you notice more and more as you spend more time on this thing is that it's just so aggressive. Everything is so aggressive. I need to pull over and take a second just to chill out. It's just so hopped up, man. It's, it's crazy. But uh, it also makes me realize that while this is an excellent motorcycle, I, 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 it's just too much, man. Holy cow, is it so much bike? And I know a lot of people really like that, but god damn, is it so much. And we're going to show you here on one of my favorite roads here in Austin. This is Cow Creek. Uh, well, actually, we're not in Austin. We're a ways away. And I come here all the time on my supermoto. And I think this is an awesome supermoto road. Uh, even if you have like a MT-09 or, you know, a street triple, you know, something in the middleweight category great road the aprilia is literally like bringing a bazooka to kill a fly you know it's just so much bike let's resume what has actually been a more punishing ride than i would have thought on the tuono why are you not going oh kickstand's not all the way up okie doke so Let's talk a little bit about Cow Creek here first. So, as you're clearly seeing, this is a big, wide, unmarked road. There's no dividing line, there's no nothing. It's very uncontrolled, and the speed limit here is 35 miles an hour. Nobody comes down here and does 35 miles an hour. 100% not. Um, most people I know are around, you know, the 50s and the 60s through here. Uh, but you also got to remember that it's not a racetrack. And a lot of the cars out here aren't actually cars. They're big ass trucks that come around blind corners that, you know, they're the guys that live out here. Um, and those folks know that there's a lot of bikers that like to come out here and party. But you know, you still, you need to be paying attention while you're riding. And there's, you know, there's a lot of crap out here. It's not exactly a maintained roadway. Um, it's, you know, just a dusty back road, which is a lot of fun. I love these kind of dusty back roads because you get to see some cool stuff. But when you're on a motorcycle like the Tuono, out here it's I'm not gonna lie it's kind of hard to have fun on this road and that's as somebody who's you know I've got uh, I don't know we'll call it five six seven years of mostly street riding experience which I know uh, it's quality not quantity you gotta you know really learn how to go fast around a racetrack right that's that's where you learn skills and off-road riding is where you learn skills and street riding is really kind of it's not a proving ground but a lot of people like to go out and have fun on the weekend and oh man if if i were in the market for a motorcycle just to have fun on the weekend would i be thinking to wono thoughts after riding it around on a street like this and probably not because this this bike okay I'm gonna say some stuff here and people are gonna think that I'm harping on a motorcycle that is excellent that is perfect and guys this motorcycle is phenomenal it is so good everything about it is so good but you also have to realize what this video series is about and this is about 
a bike as your daily street rider, something that you're gonna have in your garage and, you know, ride around on the weekend for fun with your buddies, ride to the office. And in that sense, it just, it doesn't work, man. It is so potent. And I, you can't even begin to touch what this motorcycle can do. And in sport mode, on this street, it's a lot. You're constantly thinking about how much power you're putting down and it's so easy to overcook it into some of those obstacles and the suspension is so stiff over these bumps and man, I just, I'm not having fun out here on this thing. I can have fun. But that's like, I, I don't know, I'd, I'd have to be pushing it so hard and then you're running up against the limits of the street and not the limits of the bike, you know? Like, I, I'm constantly feeling the, the interruption of the traction control out here. Um, I'm constantly feeling the suspension being jarring over these bumps. It's... It's just too much, man. It is so much bike. And it's a screaming deal for, for what you're getting and what you're paying. Oh my God, this bike is phenomenal. Holy cow. But geez, it's just, it's too hard to ride. All right, let, let's let's come back to macro here, right? I'm, I'm just some street doofus. And surely somebody who is more advanced of a rider than I could extract more out of this motorcycle on the street than I am capable of. But let's also be honest with ourselves here. How many of you in the comments are one of those riders who can really use this motorcycle out here? I'm going to guess it's not that many. Sure, there's keyboard warriors out there, 100%. But you also gotta be real with yourself and be like, you know, I kinda just like doing weekend twisties and having fun and... Maybe for you, going, just like poodling through this twisty road at, you know, 30, 40, 50 miles an hour in first and second gear, maybe that's enjoyable. But I'm constantly feeling this motorcycle just scream for me to do more. It's constant, it's begging me to do more. You know, a lot of times you're like, the motorcycle coaxes bad behavior out of you. This motorcycle demands bad behavior because it's just how it's meant to be ridden. And sure, yeah, you can get a sport touring version of this motorcycle, but man alive, that is that is a lot for a sport tourer. I maybe I'm just getting to the point now where I'm like, you know, I, I I'm more f comfortable admitting my own failings as a motorcyclist. I mean, this thing this thing is so rapid. Holy cow! And on the side of the tire, it is it is phenomenal. It is so cool. And the sound is to die for. I constantly feel like I'm just, I'm barely opening the throttle, you know? I'm barely getting into what this motorcycle can do. And I'm, I'm having to think so hard about the road that I can't really look around and enjoy the scenery out here. Here. It's going to start mellowing out a little bit in terms of the water crossings. I'm pretty sure that's the last water crossing, and I can sort of pick up the pace a little bit through here. Oh, but here's another cattle guard, so I got to slow down, otherwise, it's going to punch me in my taint. All right, now we're in a slightly more chilled out segment, but the road is all busted up. over there. I gotta pay attention to that. Now, I'm not looking down at the speedo, so I don't know how fast I'm going. I, fe I feel like I'm doing okay. But I know, I know I'm either in first or second gear. Alright, this is a 
super tight hairpin. It gets water across it all the time, so it's mega slick through here. As far as motorcycles that I've ridden in this series, the best way that I can define this on a twisty road ugh, is exhausting. It is exhausting on a twisty road because you're constantly having to wrangle just a biblical amount of power and you're constantly thinking. You have to be so on point when you're riding this thing. And if you're not, it's just gonna chew you up and spit you out, man. And some people love that, but it's just not for me. Now, with all that being said, let me get this motorcycle back into the shop here, and we're going to see what the Discord boys have to say for a quick little Discord Q&A. Let's do it. And just like that, we are back in the shop answering some questions from Discord. If you guys wanna participate in videos like this, get entered to win this motorcycle right here or any other motorcycle that we are giving away, all you gotta do is click the link down in the description below. Go to yamminoob.co, join up as little as $5 a month and you can get yourself into the Discord, which is a ton of fun. There are so many riders out there. Yam and I are in there all the time. You get access to Discord live streams. You get all sorts of cool stuff, including 10% off of Twisted Road Rentals and 10% off the Yammy Noob store. That's merch, that's gear, anything you need to pick up for your ride, you get 10% off just by subscribing. So click that link down below, get yourself signed up, and uh, you too can ask some questions about whatever motorcycle I'm doing next time. So let's dive in with the first question from Bo. Spite, with as good of a bike as it is, what is the most annoying day-to-day -day thing about it? Definitely, 100%, the, uh, the lock to lock. I don't understand why Aprilia just won't give us more angle from lock to lock. Look at how little there is just moving it from side to side. That is, it sounds like a small thing guys. And I know I'm probably more annoyed by it than most people would be, but it is shocking how narrow the turn angle is of this motorcycle. It's very clearly meant to just be going fast around a racetrack. Uh, and not be moved around on the street. So that is the most annoying thing day to day. <laughs> Next up, Squid Ceviche. Spite, do you automatically become a biscotti boy the moment you swing a leg on it? No, actually you don't. Um, while this is an Italian motorcycle and it does look aggressively European, it doesn't have the same stigma, I suppose, that you would apply to a Ducati. Aprilia guys, um, they're a different breed, but they also don't seem to be so obnoxious about it as Ducatistas are. Um, you can kind of just be a normal human being and own an Aprilia. You cannot be a normal human being and own a Ducati. It's not, it's not allowed. Keon Joe, MPG question mark. Um, okay, so, this is not the motorcycle that you want to worry about miles per gallon on. Yes, you can cruise and get like 40 miles to the gallon, but good luck. <laughs> You're not going to just cruise on this bike. Again, it's not allowed. Next up, Vince82. Which one is absolutely the best bike to buy if you're planning to ride Tarmac, and why is it the Tuono? It's kind of not the Tuono, to be honest. Um, this motorcycle is really cool and I love riding it around, but on the street, this is not the motorcycle that I would get. Uh, it's, it's just a little, it's a little too much. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. But a real question from Vince82, are the menus as annoying as they seem? Yes, they absolutely are. They're, I don't understand why Aprilia made them so hard to navigate. Um, they should just do what Ducati did. Ducati nailed it. A13, considering the Tuono has some luggage options, is there any reason to consider a sport touring bike over it? It really depends on how much you value sport versus touring. If you're all in on sport and you wanna like be able to go 200 miles, 
you should probably be looking at the Tuono. But if you wanna really put down miles on the road, I probably would not do this as a sport touring option. Yes, it is available, but there are better bikes for sport touring. I'm thinking something like a uh, Tracer 900 or, I mean, even like uh, if you want a hyper sport tour, get something like the KTM Super Duke GT. Um, this thing is, it's about the most aggressive hyper naked you can get stance wise. And I would not want to tour on this motorcycle. That's just me. Next up, Sudowoodo. On a scale of one to liquefied, how hot do you balls get in traffic? Um, honestly, not that bad on this motorcycle. Uh, it's not Ducati levels of testicular roastification. Um, it does get warm, don't get me wrong, but it's not as bad. It's not like on the Ducati where the rear cylinders are literally right up under your nuts 100% of the time. So. If I was going to be stuck in traffic on a 200-ish horsepower Hypernaked V4, this is the one I'd rather be stuck in traffic on. Seven round burst. How does the stock suspension feel on the Tuono? Uh, electronically adjustable. It feels phenomenal. Um, a bit stiff, not going to lie, it is stiff, but it automatically adjusts, so uh, it's always set and ready to go. Feels great. Fast bike, slow rider. As a daily rider, how expensive can we expect maintenance to be? It's not going to be as bad as something like a Ducati because it doesn't have Desmos. It's still a V4 though, so you have to consider the fact that once you start hitting some of your more expensive service intervals, thinking valves, it's a lot of work to get it done on this motorcycle. So if you are just commuting kind of like 10 miles here and there to the office, yeah, sure, totally, go for it. Um, your biggest expense is probably gonna be gas on this thing, because it hauls the mail and you don't wanna just cruise on it. But uh, in terms of like cost of ownership, these are definitely lower than some of your other more exotic motorcycles. Jellied Monster, would you consider it a bucket list bike someone should aspire to have at some point? Um. That's actually a really good question. I think that you should ride it at least once. 100% you need to ride a motorcycle like this because it really is one of a kind. Now, as far as owning it goes, I mean, there are so many bucket list bikes out there that if it's not calling to you and you think that there's some other bucket list bike out there, I don't think this is going to change your mind. Uh, but you should definitely, definitely ride it at least once. But, you know, maybe you want something like the Thruxton RS. If that's really your cup of tea, there's no reason to run out and grab a crazy Hypernaked. Get the bike that feels best to you. Last up, we've got Satsui here. I've heard people say that some of the big time leader bikes can be taxing to ride on the mine because you're always focusing on minding your throttle hand. How does the Tuono compare in this sense? Is it also taxing mentally or is it just chilled out enough to where it is more dailyable. Well, like I said earlier, this thing, it's, no, it's not chilled at all. There, this bike has no chill whatsoever. Um, so it's, it's a lot of work to ride, not gonna lie. Now, with all of that being said, let's get the bike back out on the road one last time and start wrapping up my thoughts on the Tuono. Now let's round out my thoughts on this motorcycle here because I have said a lot of diametrically opposed stuff about this bike in this video. And I think everything that I'm saying is true. Uh, I think it is completely true that this motorcycle is awesome. Everything about it is so cool. You know, it looks cool, it looks flashy. The engine sound is so just aggressive and just, I mean, it's so cool. Who doesn't love that V4 soundtrack? This is one of the best sounds in motorcycling, man. And the fact that you can just go acquire this bike, there's probably, you. there's one sitting in your Aprilia dealership right now. Uh, and you could just go buy one. 
And if you don't want the factory with the crazy suspension and stuff, it's even cheaper. And you can get bags for it. It's such a great motorcycle. And you get so much bike for the dollar. But, that being said, as a daily rider, man, this thing is... You're, all right, you're on YouTube right now because you're watching this video. Go ahead and open another tab and search for the following. Search for Raven's Flight by Amana Marth. It's a metal song, so if you're not a metalhead, just, just listen to the first little bit of it and then come back. Okay, now if you've come back and you've listened to that, that literally is what this motorcycle is like. The entire song is just like that intro and even down to like the super down tune drop A chugging lines in the middle. It's all so aggressive, the whole thing. And it has no variation. It is just all out aggression all the time. That perfectly describes the Tuono. Even in tour mode, which you could you could say is like the down to chugging riff of this bike, uh, and sport mode being like the super high flying, tapped out, uh, you know, uh, just more aggressive riffs. It's it's all just anger all the time, and that's exhausting, man. It is honestly exhausting to ride this motorcycle. Uh, and if it's not, that means that everything just feels like a giant pit lane, right? Because you're, you're not going fast. The engine is still making this sort of screaming noise. It's, it's just too much. It is just too much. And I know, I know a lot of people out there are thinking, that it's that's what they want they want something that is so hair on fire and so aggressive all the time something that uh you know just feels like it's just juiced up and angry but especially if you're looking at this as your only motorcycle it's nice to have something that can be super crazy aggressive sure but it's also nice to have something that can be chilled out I, I like I like a little bit of variation in my motorcycles and obviously not every motorcycle can be totally chilled out it's not like you're going to get an electronics package that makes like five different motorcycles all in one although some have actually gotten really good and do that but the Tuono doesn't. The Tuono is just all in, all go, no quit, angry aggression all the time. I mean, again, we're in touring mode, guys. We're in touring mode. <laughs> just like, I, literally, that's tour. This bike has so much power. It's crazy. It is so unbelievably fast. And it just doesn't, it doesn't chill out. And that, that makes it tough. It makes it really tough to get along with on the day-to-day. -day. Um, especially when you talk about some of the weirder eccentricities on this motorcycle. Like how the steering lock is comically narrow. Uh, how obtuse the menus are to get through. Uh, how much of a pain in the butt cruise control can be sometimes. Like, sometimes I, I try to set cruise control, and it's just, like right now, I'm trying to set cruise control, and it won't do it. I don't know why. Like, I push up, nothing happens. I push down, nothing happens. I push out to set, nothing happens. I don't understand. And if I click up to fourth, suddenly it starts working you know like you can't cruise in this motorcycle in anything other than like the highway gears and stuff and i don't know it's maybe that makes sense on some level but i i just want to i just want to chill out sometimes man i can't take this motorcycle out and just be like all right i want some nice easy throttle therapy through the hills N no it's just like all right we're gonna go out, we're going to break every speed law known to man, 
uh, we're going to be a rolling war crime with the exhaust the whole time. You're gonna love it. Oh, don't worry, don't be wrong. You're gonna love it, but everybody else around you is gonna hate you. And that's just, that so perfectly describes this motorcycle, man. It's like, it's just so peaked out. It's everything is just pushed to the max on this bike. And yeah, there are times when that's fun. That is a ton of fun, like through these long sweepers here. Sure, you can really get after it if you want. You could haul the mail on this motorcycle, but then no matter what you do, you're gonna have to come back to the fact that speed limit out here is 55, and these cops out in these hills, man, they'll ticket you for going 57 out here. Not not least of which 107 so I think that that really wraps up my thoughts it's been a while since I've really had such a diametrically opposed view of a motorcycle um, and I think that's just me trying to be realistic with you guys so hopefully you've enjoyed this uh, I have to give this motorcycle my completely arbitrary um, completely arbitrary rating because that's what we do here at the end of every uh at the end of every single one of these videos i just come up with some random numbers so that you can try to grade this motorcycle and try to figure out if it's better than any other and i have the perfect grade for this motorcycle and it is six roided out metal singers stuffed into one jail cell fighting to the death that is the rating for this motorcycle. Don't get me wrong, guys. The Tuono, amazing motorcycle. But as a daily rider, man, I, <laughs> there, there are quicker ways to get yourself a lot of speeding tickets. But this is sure as hell a really fun way to do it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will catch you guys in the next episode of Yammy New. Keep, Keep watching, watching Yammy New.